guys also hear me? Is my sound quality, uh, I know you can hear me, but is the sound quality good? You guys happy with that? All right, fantastic. Well, cool. Hey there, Gail. Nice to see you. All right, awesome. All right, so you can see me, you can hear me. I just have to do the disclaimer that everything in this presentation is for educational purposes only and is not advice or recommendation to buy or sell. All right, so here we go. I'm going to give you a little intro, and then we're going to talk about a real example. So I'm going to set the stage. We're going to do an example. I'm going to uh, respect your time. We're going to have you out of here like Morgan has the time in about 45 minutes or maybe even a little less. So again, my name is Ron Haight. I am with Market Tamer. I've taught thousands of people live over the web all over the world, and I see some names here that I'm familiar with, like Gail. It's very nice to see you. So. I love helping others, and our mission at Market Tamer is to help folks protect their heart. Whether the market continues to rise, crash again, go sideways, doesn't matter. Our members are always prepared not to lose their shirt, but to profit from any trend. So let's go ahead and move into today's topic, which is on fixing broken trades the market timer way. Now, I'm going to be doing some of these slides pretty fast, so we're going to keep going at a really, really nice. <laughs> nice pace. <laughs> All right. So to introduce the topic of today's session, think about the following. Accidents happen, right? Uh, car accidents, they happen too. A and this one doesn't need a caption. So uh, this one's pretty much just ouch. And for you pet lovers out there, like my wife and I, pet accidents happen too. But of course, stock market accidents, you know, they happen as well. And no matter how often you traded, even if you know what you are supposed to do, every once in a while, mistakes happen. You screw up. Maybe it wasn't your fault. Maybe it wasn't your fault. But, but things happen. Or you could do everything perfectly. But the market surprises you, messes up your trade. And just recently, it happened to a stock that you guys know pretty well. And, and that stock is Facebook. And when we bought it, we actually told our community, don't buy it yet. Don't buy it. When the smart guys are selling, you really shouldn't be buying. So well, let me just tell you a story. And, and we've, seen other, we've seen other smart guys sell at the top before, just like Blackstone. If you guys remember Blackstone, it went public around 35. Then that little turkey dropped all the way down to 5 bucks a share. And then it went up to 15 or so. But it was down 50% from its highs. So when Facebook did indeed come public, you know, we said, hey, don't buy it. We're not going to touch this thing with a 10-foot pole. So we didn't at 45. And we didn't buy it at 40 either. In fact, when it hit 35, members are saying, hey, we, you know, we, should we buy 35? We're like, no. Once it got to 30, we were tempted. And you know what? We said, hey. We're going to start accumulating a position. We're going to track it for everybody to follow. And you know what? We were 100 Facebook. And this is going to be a great example for our members. It dropped by a third. It now plunged over 50% from its highs, just like Blackstone did. You know, here's an example. You know, Facebook was up there when it went public around 44 bucks. And then it dropped all the way down to the 20s at the time of this chart. In fact, I don't know if you guys heard, but they were thinking about changing the ticker from FB to FP for faceplant. It was more, more <laughs> it was more applicable for how the stock was treating its investors. So here's the thing: even though we were 100% wrong when we bought, because the stock did drop a third after we purchased it, were we worried? Not a chance. Why are we so sure? Why are we so confident? Because we've done it before. As we progress through today's presentation, I'm going to show you a super simple and hugely powerful way of turning losers into winners. Super simple. I'm going to show you how you too can recover from a bad trade and potentially turn it back into a winner. And you should know how to do this because you do it everywhere else in life. Whether you have a, you have a doctor, right? If you have an accident, you go to the doctor. If your pet has an accident, you go to the vet. But what happens if your portfolio has an accident? How do you fix that? Just like a mechanic 
fixing a car or a pilot flying an airplane. You got to have a plan in order to fix things when it's dope. Someday, some trade, it's going to go wrong. You can't be perfect. So think about it. You would not let a pilot fly an airplane without knowing what to do if things went wrong. You wouldn't go to a doctor who didn't have a plan to get you better. So why on earth would you have worked your whole life, your nest egg, without having a plan to know what to do when things go wrong? The reason you can be sure things will go wrong is because nobody has a crystal ball. You, me, anybody. Nothing's going to be right 100% of the time. So even though you sit down and you do all the research you possibly can, technical, fundamental, sentimental, you use everything, sometimes things just don't work out. And once you can admit to yourself that you will be wrong someday, you can fix, you can embrace the idea of fixing that trade. As long as we have a plan, we can know what to do at the right time. If you have a plan and you have well-defined exit, it's, there's things we can do. And then it becomes unemotional. It's clockwork. Without a plan, it's easy to take losses regularly. What if you could turn a losing trade into a winner? What if you could take that last $1,000 loss and turn it into a $1,000 winner? That's a $2,000 portfolio swing. Think about every loss you just had. And what if it became a winner? It's a double. It goes in the wrong, from the wrong direction to the right direction. With a $10,000 portfolio, that means you're up 10%, not down 10%. Take that $1,000 and add it up off all those losing trades and imagine what that turnaround would look like. What if you could turn each loser into a winner? How much difference would that make in your account? How much extra money would you have just by not losing? It's always better not to lose, but how do you do it? There's two key ingredients, patience and discipline. It goes to the plan. We can't overreact, and when the right time comes and we meet the plan, we act. The same goes for whether you're Woods, Federer, or Gabby Douglas. They all have a coach. They all have a plan. Nobody gets rich overnight. While it's possible to get rich overnight, do you, match, do you know how much risk you have to take in order to have these trades just double and triple every time you enter them? It's, off, you know, it's nice to think about that, but it's very difficult to do. Having a plan, slowing things as a jug fills drop by drop. We talk about making the right decision each and every time. By the time you get to the end of the year, it makes a big difference. So you want to think of your nest egg as the same way, slow and steady. We're not looking to make that triple or quadruple winner overnight. So in the following example, I'm going to show you step by step how to trade a position that goes exactly wrong. I'm going to show you how to take that loser and make it a winner. It's going to be clear, easy, repeatable, and step-by-step. -step. We like this picture, so we had to create a slide around it. It's okay if other one, others want to trade like monkeys, right? <laughs> but we can trade smarter because we're going to have a plan. So here's how to fix a broken trade the market team way. All right, so we're going to start with a stock, just any old stock. We're going to call it XYZ. I will not divulge the name. You guys can guess. Go ahead and type it in if you want as we go through here and think if you know the right answer. But I'm not going to tell you what the stock is. It doesn't matter. So we're going to start by purchasing this stock at 72 bucks a share. Because think about it. How many of you folks have bought a stock in your IRA, your 401k, your cash account and said, all right, it looks like the stock's in an uptrend. Uh, I've done my homework. and I'm not talking about going into the nitty gritty, but just it looks good, right? I don't, I don't see really anything wrong with this chart, so we buy it, 72 bucks. Now here's some little simple tidbits. I want to talk about the five-day and the 20-day EMA. 
The five-day EMA is in blue. They're exponential moving averages. The 20-day EMA is in red. That's it. That's, we're not going to go into all these oscillators, which I will use. This is really, really simple. I want to keep this simple. We're not going to buy at the perfect time. In fact, I want to buy almost at the wrong time to make a point, which is what we did with Facebook. So we bought at 72 right there, and wouldn't you know it, the stock starts to turn around. It's like, wait, this is just my luck. Every time I buy a stock, it seems the very next day it goes down. You know, I should tell my, my friend, hey, I'm going to buy today, so you sell because you'll make money. I know what's going to happen. So here's the deal. We bought at 72, right? A couple days later, the stock inevitably drops four straight days. With the stock around 68, I'm going to buy some long puts. I'm going to buy them at strike 70, right near where the stock is trading, and they're going to cost me about five bucks a share. Now, long puts are going to increase in value. They're going to profit as the stock drops. So yes, our stock's going to lose value, you know, if it keeps dropping, right? But this long put is actually going to increase in value. Okay, so we buy our put. So what does this look like? The cost basis of the trade is now 77. We bought at 72. We paid five bucks a share. That increases the stock cost basis, if you will, to $77. However, if this stock goes to zero, worst case, and it drops to zero, we still get to sell at 70. So our risk in this trade, once we buy the shares and then we buy that put, our risk is now 70. Even if it goes to zero, it's 70. Folks that traded Enron, maybe even Research in Motion, and other stocks that have had rough times of it, they would see the value in this. It's like, oh my gosh, are you telling me that I wouldn't have lost my shirt? Yes, it's exactly what happens. Okay, so our risk is seven. Now let's see what happens. And we're going to buy one put, one long put, for every 100 shares of stock. All right, so now we're going to have some interaction with you guys as well. So in this chart, up here, we bought the circle. We bought the long put, right? Now the stock just keeps going down. Was I right or what? Every time I buy a stock, the stock just drops. Okay, well, the stock came down, and now it's hitting a previous support level. So we'll go into just a little bit of technical analysis. So here's my question. In this chart, the stock has dropped, but the puts made a lot of money. Would you sell the long put? Just give me a yes or no. Go ahead and, go ahead and, then, and type in. Would you sell your long put and take those profits? Or would you hold the long put because, oh, this stock might just keep going down? What do you think? There's, by the way, there's no wrong answer. Believe it or not, whatever you answer is the right answer. And it's not a trick question. If you decided to bank profits, meaning you close the long put, you just found out that if you decided to say, uh-uh, I'm not selling those long puts. I want to hold those turkeys in case this stock keeps going down. You just discovered that you're more conservative by nature. You're both right. It all depends what you want to do. Are you trading money you can afford to lose? Or are you trading hard-earned money that you can't afford to lose because it's your retirement money? Well, if it's your retirement money and you can't afford to lose it, Typically, you would not sell that put because you don't know if the stock's done going down yet. If you're more aggressive, well, yeah, you could have sold that put. The five-day exponential moving average, which is in blue, okay? There was no bullish crossover. Now, let's go back a second. I'm going to purposely back up in slides, okay? This was our previous slide. Look at this. The blue line crossed through the red line. That is a sell signal. We then buy puts to protect ourselves. We're getting a trend change. When I asked you that question, did you want to sell your put or not, and cash in and make some money on that put option, probably half of you said yes. I was watching all the replies. It looks to be about 50-50 or so. Half of you said, oh, yeah, I'm selling that thing. I'm, I'm making money. And the other half said, no way. Now I go forward to the slide I just showed you. Did the five-day cross up through the 20-day? It crossed below here. That's a sell. The answer is, no, it didn't. It never crossed. Look what happened. Oh, cliff. In fact, the stock dropped like 15% or 10 bucks more. 
So conservative traders were vindicated. They're like, yes, we did not sell that long put. The stock plummets further. The long put's going up in value. We're happy. Now, keep in mind of, of the big context here. The stock's still losing money. We're not happy about that. But here's my question. Do stocks go to zero all the time? The answer is no. Of course they can go to zero, but no, especially if the company makes a decent product, especially if the company has decent fundamentals. No, it doesn't go to zero. There's going to be ebbs and flows. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. I think that's fair to say, right? So, yeah, we're losing money on the stock, but we have this long put that it's just printing money. The trend is still bearish. Now, here's the next part. With earnings imminent and the stock at 50 bucks, <laughs> we bought it at 72. That wasn't so good. We don't want to hold these strike 70 puts now because they're worth so much money. And if the stock has a great earnings report, that thing could just shoot up 10, 20%. However, how many, how many of you folks have held the stock through earnings only to see the worst possible thing? And then it drops 20%, and then you're thinking, oh, dear Lord, what was I thinking? Okay. And by the way, I did that. I did that before I knew what options were. So I don't want to go through earnings without a long put. But I also don't want to keep my long put way up there at strike 70, and it has all this profit in it. I don't want to let it evaporate. So in order to resolve the dilemma, well, here's what we can do. We can close that long 70 put and bank a lot of profit. But we can simultaneously buy to open a new long put, which some of you folks are mentioning. You guys were spot on. We could buy a lower strike long put at strike 50. This is just called rolling $50 put just in case the company comes out really bad earnings and the stock just drops again. So what I'm going to do as we do this math, we're going to be using worst case scenarios. So these numbers are not going to be massaged to look good just for a presentation. In fact, we're actually going to make more money than I'm going to show you, but I'm going to use worst case numbers. So let's assume that worst case scenario, that when we sold those long puts, there was no extrinsic value remaining. Granular term, there's no extra time. We just sold it for what it was worth. We paid five. We sold it for 20 because the stock went from 70 when we bought the put. It dropped. So the stock lost more, but let's start with the put option. We made $15. That's cool. So here's what we're going to do. Here's our cost basis. We bought the stock at 72, right there. We paid five bucks for that put. Remember I told you our cost basis was 77, right? Now let's do our new cost basis after we sell that put option. 72, $15 in profit because the stock fell out of bed. And we made lots of money on that put. But remember I said I want to buy a new put too just in case it has bad earnings? So 72, which was we paid for the stock. $15 profit, but $3 to buy a new put. Our new cost basis is at 60. So now we're at $60. I'm going to back up two slides, three slides. Our cost base is at 60, stocks at 50. Man, it's not the best yet, but it beats the crap out of owning the stock at 50 when you bought it at 72, doesn't it? So cost base is 60. Company has earnings. Ah, guess what happens? There goes the stock. It gaps up. So now we're going to assume the worst case scenario. We're going to assume that long put was worth absolutely zero. But those of you guys that are option savvy know that that long put probably had 20 there yet. It wasn't going to be worthless. But let's just say it was. We didn't get a darn penny for it. We just lost that $3, that insurance policy. Now the stock's at 60 But what also happened when that earnings then occurred and the stock gapped up, the five-day crossed up through the 20-day. That also gives us a buy signal. It tells us that the odds are the bulls should start to take advantage now because earnings is a fundamental event, not technical. It gives you a status update on how the company is doing financially. 
and the bulls love it. They're buying this stock hand over fist. So subsequent to the bully, to bullish earnings gap, the stock actually continued substantially higher. A bearish crossover never occurred. So the stock goes up to 60 on the earnings gap. It then goes up, and then it rolls over, but it finds support at the red line. Remember, the red line's a 20-day EMA, the blue line's a 5-day EMA. But notice what does not happen. Even though the stock pulled back, that blue line never crossed down through the red line. So there was no need to buy another put. The stock was just undergoing a little bit of a pullback. Stocks do that. They don't go up in a straight line forever, I do, unless they're named Tesla. But even Tesla goes sideways sometimes. So it pulled back, and then the stock bounces. And then it goes right back up. So think about this. Let's compare the buy and hold strategy with the adjustment process. Let's go back. You bought at 72. It's now at 72. What are you thinking? Because I can tell you what I'm thinking. And just to give you background on myself, you know, over 10 years ago when I first started learning about options, I did not understand anything. I have no background in finance. I know zero. I, I was probably, I worked on a farm. I'm probably as far away as you can get from being an options trader. So I didn't understand all this stuff. All I knew is you buy stock here, and whenever I buy it, it goes down, then I lose money, and then I sell, and then it goes back up. It was uncanny how all that used to happen. But this was this used to be me. Oh, I buy a stock here, it goes down, goes back up. Now what are you thinking? Oh, you're crossing your fingers, you're praying to the stock gods that, oh my gosh, I got my money back. Thank God. Oh, this is awesome. This is great. Now I'm going to sell. And you didn't make a darn thing. But what did happen? What happened during this whole downtrend? You're pulling your hair out. You're losing sleep. You're probably thinking of new four-letter words. You're saying you're never going to do this again. Basically, you're just aging <laughs> right on the spot. You're pretty upset. And then it comes back, and then you're happy. Why do you need to feel all this pain? There's no need to feel the pain. When they cross, we'll just buy a put. I know it's not going to protect us dollar for dollar, but some of you guys know how we could do that. I'm going to get to that later. But at least you have insurance. And no matter where the stock goes, you are not going to turn into an Enron and have your whole account blown out. So again, buy and hold, you didn't make a darn penny. But we bought a put in our example. Our put profited by a total of $12 a share. Remember, the first long put we bought profited actually $15 a share. But then for earnings, because we don't know which way the stock is going to move after earnings, unless I guess you're Goldman when you have insider information. But that's a whole other topic for another day. Um, <laughs> I'm joking, of course. But um, we had to buy that other put for $3. And we said that $3 put was going to expire worthless. So that's how I get to $12. We paid $15, but then we lost 3 on the put when the stock gapped up. So we only have $12 in profit. Well, the stock started at 72. It ends at 72. Do you feel a lot more comfortable making 6,000 bucks on 500 shares or 1,200 bucks on 100 shares? I do. I also slept better at night, not, not worrying about my capital going to zero. I'm going to go back to a chart a second. Does anybody now want to take a guess at what this stock is? I know. I bet it's killing some folks. Wendy, the stock is Apple. Maybe it could be Walmart. Maybe it's Philip Morris. Maybe it's IBM. This is Apple. So it's not some crappy stock out there that doesn't have good fundamentals. This is actually back when it was $72. The same can be applied today. When our members wanted to know when the tide was turning on Apple, we said back in October when it was only about 50 bucks off its high, the tide has now turned. And our members were protected, and they didn't get their, you know, they didn't see the stock drop 200 more dollars. Very, very soon. It's a great company. The key to the trade, 
that we just outlined include following the rules. Not what does Ron think or not what does Gail think or not what does Jim think or William or Jane. It, it's not about that at all. It's when the rules, when you have the rules in place, when you have the plan and things change and the direction changes, you now need to adjust. You need to act, period. Stock was moving down. It went back up to 72. Resistance was broken. The stock went up. We never had a 5 and 20 day crossover. So now that you bought the stock at 72, you moved down, you moved up. Now the stock's over 90. You made 12 bucks when the stock declined. You have over a 50% return on those same 100 shares in seven months. You didn't, you could, you know, for IRA trading, Knowing that even if the stock goes down, you're not going to lose your behind. Now, something that Leon commented on and a few other folks did as well earlier, we only looked at employing a long put position to lower the cost basis. It is possible to reduce the risk even further through other options. When the stock Stock gave us that bearish technical crossover. Remember, we bought the stock. It's actually a little gray candle. It was sort of funny how that day we started tracking it, right? We buy it, and then the stock goes down. The 5 and 20-day crossovers, we could start selling calls right on, Tracy. We could sell calls maybe three to four months in time if we wanted. If we wanted to, we could take in three bucks a share. Being very conservative, some of you guys know we could sell calls with a lot more value. That's another three bucks put in your pocket. and the stock did move down, those short calls could expire worthless, or we could buy them back for a nickel, or put three more dollars in our pocket. So now we're way up over 50%. We're adding three more dollars. Now here's the, th here's the thing. Those short calls are bought back before earnings. We short calls over here, right there, remember? Stock drops, we buy the short call back before earnings if it is not expired. Now the stock gaps up. Do we need to short calls at any point during this uptrend? Playing it conservative? It never crossed below the 20 day. The stock's just moving higher. Now when Apple was back in the 70s, as this example, you had to sell monthly short calls. But what do we have now that Apple didn't have when it was in the 70s? And a previous speaker commented on it already. What can we do every, you got it, Roger, every week? For those of you guys that want to be more proactive and put more money in your pocket, you don't have to sell monthly options. Oh, my goodness, we could be selling weekly options against Apple. So the example that I've given you of making over 50% on Apple, even taking something when Apple was in its 70s can increase the return. So the 50% figure I've given you is actually very conservative. If you like to tinker more with options, you can see the power. I'm not giving you the And those of you guys that know options, no, I'm not giving you the best scenario. This is just a very average scenario. So here's the rule of thumb. And this is the simple one. When the stock is in a downtrend, we sell calls against the stock. When those two moving averages are pointing down, when that five-day cross is down through the 20, boom, we pop in a short call. We start putting money in our pocket. We start buying long puts. When technical levels fail, like the moving averages, we can sell calls against the stock. It's just that simple. But always, and this is literally for me always, prior to earnings, I always buy back the short calls. So that way, I can be a little piggy, and our potential profit is unlimited. Again, those of you guys that are even more advanced, you can say, yeah, but Ron, there's things we could do. I'm like, I get it. But I want to keep it simple. I don't want short calls in front of earnings reports, because if the stock gaps up like it did with Apple, make more money. So selling calls in addition to married puts means our percent return on risk
is actually going to, our cost, our risk structure in the trade is actually going to decline. Because when we sell short calls, we put money in our pocket. Guys, it's that simple. It is that straightforward. Oh, okay. Give me one second. It looks like the Amnovia connection was lost. All right. Yeah, seriously, Tracy. Um, Tracy, when I first started trading, I'm just waiting for the screen to come back on. You know, my parents, you know, they had they had money and it wasn't a lot of money. But they rode those stocks down in the market crash. And that was the crazy part that if we had only known how to use a simple long put option, how it would have protected their capital, all their losses. All right. Um, because I've lost my connection here. Hey, Ron, why, why don't you stop it and then um, reproject again? All stop right, the projection. Yeah. All right, I'm going to reboot. Gail, Diana. All right, awesome. Um, so what I've, just to recap, what I've outlined is how to fix fix a broken trade, even when it goes against your initial expectations. We did the same thing with Facebook. We did the same thing with Apple. You can do this on a lot of different, a lot of different stocks. Now, one of the keys, though, is you want to pick stocks that have some symmetry. You really don't want to pick a stock that seems like it's going to bounce off the walls every third or fourth day, and it doesn't respect anything. It's it's up here, it's down here, it doesn't do anything. Apple is 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 very is widely held. It tons of liquidity. It moves around a lot. It's awesome. I mean, even Facebook adheres to this for for a good part of it. And then you might say, you know what, Ron? Well, I see what you did with Apple, but can this like be done all the time? Believe it or not, most of the time, yeah. And when in doubt, we can buy longer term long puts, so we don't have to worry about them expiring or, or, or going away. We can sell other long calls. And, and one of the things that we, we talked about by buying the stock and having a long put, as you guys are mentioning, it's a married put. But just the simple way of applying it, when the 5 and the 20 day, when the 5 day cross is down, you have a sell signal. Let's go into protection. But what happens when a stock breaks support? Bigger support. What happens if you say, Ron, I drew a horizontal line and that stock just busted through it? Can we add more long puts? Could we double our long puts? What happens if we double our long puts instead of making $15 during that decline in Apple? What if we bought two? Well, holy mackerel. That means we made 30 bucks. If you bought three, you made 45. Now, I'm not a big fan of loading up talking about. This is a very, very slow and steady wins the race. The jug fills drop by drop. We only used a one long put example. But there are times on a stock chart that when it begins to break horizontal to support and you identify that, you can add more long puts and actually make pockets of money as the stock is dropping. And then you say, man, I never knew falling stocks could be this much fun. Because let's face it, stock 45 degree angle when you go to the department store. Stocks go up in an escalator, right? But when they go down, fear is so powerful. They go down in an elevator. Sometimes they can go straight down. And those of you guys that are trading GLD know what I mean. Gold. When gold breaks support, it crashes. And same thing there. So it can be used on a lot of different stocks. All right. So beyond the simple yet powerful strategy I just showed you guys, there are techniques that you can maximize gains, minimize losses. You can sleep at night. That's our core specialty at Market Tamer, turning losers into winners. There's a lot of trades that a lot of trades that we can fix. I just showed you a stock position, which was a married put, and then it was a collar for a period of time. But what if you guys do credit spreads or debit spreads, full puts, bear calls? I love credit spreads. What if you do straddles and strangles? They all can be adjusted. Ratio back spreads.
unbalanced trades, calendars, you name it, they all can be done. You don't need to master every trade. And that was one of the things that, that really got me when I first started learning how to trade options was, oh my gosh, there's so many different types of trades. How do I know which one to pick? You pick one at a time. You can rewind them. You can fast forward them. You can search by keyword and say, I want to learn more about the covered call. Type it in and search it. We cover the basics of an option. So if you're new to options, and I see some of you folks were asking some questions about a long foot. If you're new to options, we cover that. If you're middle in the middle of the row where you know what options are, but you want to learn a little more, that's covered. And then if you're an advanced options trader, we have adjustment techniques. So whether it's Greeks, basic fundamentals, technicals, income trading, that's one of our most popular items right now. People are wanting to trade with income. If you want to understand and exploit volatility, if you want to learn about portfolio management, if you want to learn about having exit plans, we cover all this in, in these 40 lessons, including the amazing lazy trade, which some of you guys know about, the wheel of profit, which is our secret recipe. That is also what we talked about today, how you can make it a wheel of profit type trade. All this is in our modules. So think about this. If you just came in and said, Ron, I understand you guys have all that, but I just want to learn about covered calls. We have, we have lessons for that. If you just own, I can't, I still can't believe how many people I talk to today that own shares but think covered calls are a bad idea. And then I show them an options chain and I say, hey, if you just have 100 shares of Apple and you just sell one short call, you're going to put a thousand bucks in your pocket this month. It's like having a rental property without tenants <laughs> or real estate taxes. Um, what if you own 500 shares of Apple? There was one gentleman I was talking to and I said, you do realize you can start putting 10K of of, uh, of uh, money, $10,000 of income into your pocket a month if you just short calls. But what if you want to learn about time decay? Income trading, module four rocks. It talks about how to learn income. There's three certainties in life. There's death, taxes, and theta. Now, theta applies to everybody except the ladies. Because time decay erodes options. We all get older, except the gals. And real professionals know that selling options is key. Not buying them. There are times when you can buy options. And I love to buy options. But selling is where the money's at. Time decay. Watching it erode. And that's what the covered call did in that trade. We can teach you how to do that. And then there's modules 9 and 10. Where he talks about adjustments. Which is what we went through today. In module 9 and 10, we, we talk about not only how to, how to adjust a stock trade if it goes against you, but also spread trades in module 10. So there's basically two philosophies. You can take losses, move on, and take more losses. And that's what I did when I first started trading. Like, well, keep it small and just get out of there. But you can also fix broken trades and turn losers into winners. As part of this special, you guys are going to get access to quiz questions. So as you guys go through and say, hey, I want to learn how to profit from volatility or I want to learn how I want to learn more about how to use long puts to protect my stocks when they go down. You can actually take quiz questions while you go through it and make sure you're mastering the material. So here's the gist of it. On this special today, um, what we've done is you're going to get access to the market forecast videos, which are done weekly, daily. You can access to stock to our stock chat and our trade review where you can actually post your trade ideas before you even think about getting into them. All 40 on-demand lessons that I talked about, the quiz questions, even our wealth path coaching, which talks about slow and steady or, or more aggressive. Plus, you're going to get access to our live education component where you get to ask coaches questions. You're going to get all this, no joke, 14 bucks for 14 days, period. So when Morgan asked me to be part of this, he wanted something special for you guys. I have never, and some of you guys know because you've attended my webinars, we have never put together this much information for 14 bucks for 14 days, ever. It's the first time I've ever done it. And it's just because you guys are part of Morgan and Morgan asked me to come in today. You can hit that access. I am going to top it out at 100 spots. The reason being is the last part of that sentence. It's the live coaching calls. We can't, I can't realistically have 200 people come in and there's still 700 I think 50 of you guys online right now. I can't take 700 new people. It would just 
totally get out of control with questions. So we're going to do 100. The first 100, when the page is over, it'll be sold out. But it's going to be 14 bucks for 14, day, 14 days. What happens after the 14 days is we normally would charge only for part, just for the live education. We would charge 147 a month. For you, it's only going to be 97. Again, that's something we've never done. So it's just for you guys with Morgan. This offer is going to be good. Morgan said he's going to be sending out the recording on Monday. So we're going to make it good until Monday midnight that this will still be active for you guys. So it's $97 a month. It will not be the 147 that you might have seen before. So you guys are actually getting more stuff and still getting a cheaper price. And that $97 becomes grandfathered. So even though you're going to see it being advertised for more, your price does not change. So again, yep, we're going to make this good till Monday. So it gives the people that couldn't attend an opportunity to watch the recording. But once we hit 100, then I have to stop. All right, so if you guys have questions, I, I tried to go through the presentation as, as uh, fast. Um, if you guys have questions, you know, please ask. I, I will be candid, and I will answer every single one. <laughs> Gail, yeah, I, I know. But I'll take care of you, Gail. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll take care of you. This is a Morgan special. So what are you getting for the 14 bucks, Bob? You're going to get access. And I'll go back. Hang on a second. You're going to get access to all 40 lessons, okay? You're also going to get access to what we call our stock chat and trade review, where if you guys have a trade idea and you would like to post a question, you'll actually see myself, the founder of the company, my business partner, Gareth, and our coaches actually respond to you. So you can actually get those questions answered, which I think is priceless. You'll also get access by email to our coaching staff because you are going to be getting access to our live education component. The classes, we call them coaching calls because they're more fun. On, on uh, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern, Tuesdays and, and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. So you get three straight days. They're all recorded and posted to the website. So you don't have to worry you know, about attending live if you can't. Because if you're on the West Coast and it's a 9 p.m. Eastern session, you might be sitting down with your family to have dinner. Or if you're in Europe, you know, it's 2 a.m. as well. So, Bob, hopefully, hopefully that, uh, that helps answer your question. Um, there's, there's a question here, and I apologize. You guys have so many good questions. They're literally flying in like you can't believe. Um, what I, okay, what I outlined today is very simple. I didn't want to make it complex. We have 45 minutes, and, and I, I love talking options, so I could go for four hours, but I think Morgan might mute me if I did that. <laughs> the other presenters wouldn't be happy. <laughs> but this is just something simple. If you think of yourself and looking at your IRA or 401k and you have these stocks and you just don't know what to do when the market turns down, and there's going to be a downturn. I know the Fed's pumping in money, and this is all great, and it is fun being a bull. There's going to be a time when, A, your stock just has bad earnings, or B, the market actually does undergo a correction one day, maybe by the time we hit 2050. But the market's going to go down. And, and knowing that you have the peace of mind, that you don't have to freak out and say, oh my gosh, there went all my money, when you get the sell signals, you just buy a put. And then you can sell calls on a monthly basis or even a weekly basis for income. Again, we, we didn't even get into the weeklies. The other presenter that was talking about weeklies, was I totally agree with. It was, it was awesome. You start using weeklies, you can put even more money in your pocket, especially if you understand how to read a, text, uh, a chart. So I think weeklies are awesome. And here's something else. Um, if you guys, uh, this, and it's a very common question I get, but what if I have you know, 200 shares? Do I have to sell two short calls? Oh my goodness, no. You can just sell one short call. You don't have to sell short calls against both if you don't want to lose the shares. But even if the stock were to rise in value and you have a short call in place, there's things we can do. We can adjust those short calls to higher strike prices so we don't have to give up our shares.
pairs. There's a lot of cool things we can do, but you know, if I start going down that rabbit hole, we'll be here a lot longer. Um, the $14 for 14 days, this is how it works. You can cancel any time and you won't be billed. All you have to do is cancel before the, before the 15th day. On the 15th day, you'll be charged $97 a month. You're not, you would not get that deal. So this is exclusive to Morgan, and it will end Monday night at midnight. The videos, if people are wondering, the videos alone, we actually do sell for 1000 bucks a year. So it, it really is no joke. We were approached by somebody to try to buy them from us, and we, we will not sell them. All right. Um, somebody asked, you know, if you sign up, when does it start? It starts immediately, so you have access tonight. <laughs> Rob, Morgan is the man. Morgan said he wanted a deal, so I obliged, and I always have a habit of over-delivering, so I wanted to make sure that it just wasn't a deal, but it was a great deal. And if you guys don't know Morgan, he carries a big stick, so you can never say no to him. <laughs> just kidding. Morgan's a really Morgan's a really really nice guy. If you go to the uh, the trade shows and stuff, you have an opportunity. Stop in and say hi to Morgan. You'll, you'll enjoy chatting with him. He's a really great person. Oh, Gail, thank you so much. You're you are too kind. All right. So my time's wrapping up. I would like to say thank you to Morgan and thank you to you guys for taking time out of your day on a Saturday. I hope you found it informative. I want you guys to walk away with something that you could put in your own portfolio. If you have any questions, um, I'll just put my email address in there just this one time. You guys can write it down and email me. And Morgan put the uh, offer in there. When we do hit 100, it will go to sold out just because I can't take, I just can't take everybody at one time because of the live component. All right, so thanks again. Morgan, thank you. I'm going to go on mute and I'll turn it back to you. So thanks again for inviting me in. All right. All right, great. Thank you, Ron. We greatly appreciate you uh, being here today. And at this time, I will turn things over to our next speaker. Um, Tom, if you want, you can go ahead and get your screen sharing going, and I'll turn things over to you. Thanks, Ron.